Thanks for tuning in. Sony doesn't get a lot of respect when you're talking about vintage audio gear, but this TA F6B integrated amplifier is a fine performer. Join me as I take you through the repair, restoration, and testing of this wonderful amplifier. If you enjoy vintage audio equipment, you've come to the right spot. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell, as well as giving me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others. There is a risk of serious injury or death from electrical shock working on this equipment. If you're not comfortable with working on the equipment, please do not take the cover off and consult a professional. This Sony TA6B is rated at 100 watts a channel at no more than 0.03% distortion into 8 ohms. It's a relatively small unit for a 100 watt power amplifier that was produced between 1977 and 1981. And the reason that it's small is that it has a switch mode power supply in it, which Sony called a pulse lock power supply. And that allowed this unit to be quite compact and quite light. The issue is, though, that this power supply is a sealed unit and all, almost all of them fail. If they haven't failed, um, they're going to fail because this power supply really gets warm. So all those capacitors and transistors within that power supply, um, they, they're just, they've just had a very, very uh, tough life. This integrated amplifier, uh, it's in pretty good shape, but it's in need of um, some repair and restoration. When I powered up the Sony TA F6B, there was a slight clicking sound, but no other indication that the unit was was on. I removed the top cover to just to take a closer look, just to see what I could see. The power supply in this unit has a reputation of failing. You know, it's 40 years old. It runs on the warm side and uh, it just has a reputation of, of causing some troubles. So top left corner, you can kind of see something, looks like a bunch of screws and it's with a cover. So I went ahead and I removed that cover, which is where the power supply resides. You know, again, just took a look. Uh, you can see with this all sealed up how um, probably it's very, very warm. This is an unusual design for a, a solid state vintage amplifier as it produces over 300 volts DC. That's very unusual. In a tube amplifier, that would be quite normal, but not in a solid state. So I removed it um, and then took a look. And just with my eyes, I could see that uh, there was an area where a uh, transistor and capacitor uh, tell obvious damage. And um, there was a piece of artwork that was just blown right off the uh, bottom of the board. So almost certainly both the uh, transistor and capacitor did not fail at the same time. One component failed and took the other one out. And if you're guessing, a 40-year-old electrolytic capacitor is probably what went. And this is a prime example of one component going that's old and should have been replaced. You know, it went and it probably took the transistor out with it. Uh, once I repaired the artwork and I replaced the defective transistor and capacitor, the amp, it, it powered up just fine. At that point, I was going to continue on. Uh, well, first I checked the voltages out of the power supply, made sure it actually was working. Seemed to be, I had the, the proper voltages, so then I continued on with the repair and the restoration. I removed the face plate and the knobs for cleaning as well. Uh, to allow me access to the switches and pots in the unit. With the boards removed, you know, it's a great time to clean up the chassis. You can get to spots that haven't uh, been cleaned since it was new. So, I mean, you know, there's always a lot of cleaning with, with any uh, vintage repair or restoration. With the boards removed, it's so much easier to clean the pots and switches with deoxit. You can get the deoxid into the switches and the pots. Make sure you don't get it all over the place. Um, you know, deoxid's a great product, but uh, it'll make a mess if you spray it all over. So with these boards removed, I can get the deoxid where I need to and clean them properly. One great thing about uh, 
the Sony TAF6B is the slack in the cables. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever worked on a unit that has this much slack in the cables. I mean, that's a great thing, you know, because these were done, these were wired up in a way that was the norm for commercial equipment uh, or consumer equipment like this is in the 70s and in into the 80s. They used a wire wrap gun and they hardwired these wires to each of the assemblies. So uh, sometimes you have trouble with that because there's not enough slack to, to move them around like you'd like to. So the front also tilts down, so that was nice. And um, there's just a lot of room to be able to get in there, you know, and that, and that always makes it much easier. So have the chassis on one side of the table and boy, I had enough room to, to bring these assemblies right on to the other side and be able to work on them. I'll be replacing all of the old electrolytic capacitors with modern equivalents. Uh, I'll also be replacing many of the uh, smaller value electrolytic capacitors that are in the audio path with film capacitors, and this will allow for improved audio quality. The replacement capacitors are smaller in physical size than the originals. I'll be using high temperature, higher temperature rated um, capacitors than were in it uh, to begin with. They were all 85 centigrade. I'll be replacing them with 105 uh, degree rated. And 105 degree centigrade is 221 degrees Fahrenheit. So hopefully your amp doesn't get that hot, but gives it a little room there of a margin of error. The replacement uh, filter capacitors are about half the physical size of the originals, but notice the 200 volt rating on these uh, capacitors. That's, that's again, very unusual for solid state equipment. Usually you'd have something, you know, from 50 to 100 volt ratings uh, for filter capacitors, but these are 200 volt. Uh, again, this is a, a great unit to work on because once you get everything uh, removed, there's, there's just a lot of space to work. You can get to the artwork side of these assemblies, um, so you know, so you can replace components. You got to get over there so you can uh, get the components in and out easily. And uh, again, this unit makes that pretty easy. Here, I've replaced the old uh, electronic uh, electrolytic capacitors on the EQ board. Again, I can't tell you how, how much easier it is that these just lean however you want them. You have to cut a few tie wraps, but once you get those tie wraps cut, um, all these, uh, all these uh, assemblies come right on out and makes uh, cleaning up everything uh, so much easier in the chassis. And uh, as I said, it just makes uh, component uh, changing much easier too. Well, I've replaced the uh, necessary components in the control assembly, put that back uh, into the chassis. Next comes in the uh, EQ assembly that again, I upgraded the components and it's ready to get put back in. Getting closer here to completion. Uh, this is just something that needs to be done on any 40 year old uh, piece of vintage audio equipment. Uh, several different assemblies here, but again, you can see I can just pull it right on out and I've got enough room to work. Uh, this is the meter assembly. Once again, it was easy to get to and uh, you know, clean the switch up and uh, change out those uh, components. Uh, next, I'll do uh, le uh, electrolytic capacitor replacement on the power amp assembly. Again, not not too difficult to to get out. Uh, the the rear panel tilts down also, so this makes again you know the whole the the whole case just sort of sandwiches uh, open, so that makes it much easier. You just remove four screws on the power assembly and. Uh, positioned it on its side so I can get to it, to the artwork side, so I can replace those 40-year-old uh, capacitors. Once again, this unit will just kind of unfold for you, and there's a lot of room in the in the cables and makes just any, any repair restoration much easier. Um, I'm going to reseat the power transistors uh, with new insulators and new thermal compound. You just remove two screws and um, they'll pull right on out of the sockets. The and you know you clean up the heat sink and then as I said you know you put new uh, insulators and uh, thermal compound. The original transistors are still in this unit, so doing this will help those run cool. Hopefully, 
they'll last another 40 years and there's probably no reason that they uh, can't. So once doing that work, I've uh, put the power assembly back, uh, power amplifier assembly back into the uh, amplifier and I'll reinstall everything. Now I'll go, you can't forget about that power supply, right? I got it going initially to get the unit going, but um, now it's time to get rid of those uh, electrolytic capacitors that are within the power supply itself. In, in the power supply, I'll be using 105 degree uh, centigrade rated capacitor and they have a great reputation and they work very well in, in any uh, vintage audio power supply. So I've got the capacitors replaced and um, I'm getting closer here. So I've reinstalled the power supply and I've gotten the other boards installed. Uh, and then once you're done here, you gotta wrap everything back up and give it a quick visual check because the whole unit's been apart. And then it'll be time for some bench testing. You know, like I said, dress up the cables neatly and install new tie wraps and she's ready for the test bench. First thing you do uh, whenever working on a unit or just have it in to check it is uh, adjust the DC offset, you know, to factory specifications. And, and again, like any unit, you need to have the service manual to tell you where to hook up your leads so that you can adjust that into what the specification is for that particular unit. I'll use a signal generator along with a uh, distortion analyzer to test out uh, the amp, make sure all the work I've done is uh, legit. I've already listened to it a little bit with my ears and I think it sounds good, but uh, really, whenever you do this type of work, you need to have the test equipment uh, available to validate that. You know, test it out very good on the test bench. Uh, no issues at all. I left it running for a couple hours. So I think we're about to uh, wrap it up. I'm getting ready to move in my Sony TA F6B integrated amplifier and uh, it hasn't been in the system in a little while. Uh, I'm looking forward to listening to it again. So here we go. I've got my speakers hooked up and uh, my turntable, CD player, tape decks, etc. It's about time to power on my TA uh, F6B and run it through its paces. So here we go. All right, I heard the speaker relay, and that's always a uh, good sign. So I think she's alive and uh, ready to make some music. As I mentioned at the beginning, Sony's not the first name that most people think of when they think of vintage audio equipment, but they made some really fine equipment. And if you ever run into a TA F6B, no, you're going to have to overcome those power supply problems, but if you do, you're going to have a great integrated amplifier. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up down below for you non-subscribers. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please subscribe. And for my present subscribers, as I always say, thank you very much. You all have a good day.